All righty, we have some attendees coming on board right now. The numbers are going up. Here we go. I'm I'm watching the uh, people come on board. This should be really exciting with American Cruise Lines today. Give it a couple of more seconds for people to get into the room, into the listen mode. Perfect. All righty. Well. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for an informative and exciting American Cruise Lines webinar. My name is Dean Lapham. I'm the Senior Director of Professional Development and Trade here at CLIA, and I'm going to just quickly go through some housekeeping before introducing our presenter. The webinar will run for about 35 to 40 minutes with time for questions at the end, so please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar, and we will get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, CLIA Global. And with that, it's my pleasure to introduce our presenter, a fellow New Englander, Sarah Smith, to present to you the benefits of partnering with American Cruise Lines. Sarah started with American Cruise Lines as a cruise specialist in 2012 and worked for five years on the sales floor during one of the biggest company expansions up to date. In 2017, she was asked to help develop a group department since so many travel advisors have asked for that option. Over the last five years, she's expanded the group department from less than 10 groups to over 100 groups. With this latest ship and itinerary expansion, she's now working on agency presentations and webinars for American Cruise Lines, in addition to being a group coordinator. We'll take it away, Sarah. Thank you so much. Welcome, CLIA members. Uh, as he uh, said, my name is Sarah Smith. I'm a Group and Business Development Coordinator with American Cruise Lines. Uh, today, I would like to introduce you to our amazing new itineraries planned for the 2023 and 2024 seasons and discuss the updates and innovations to our vessels throughout the country. Simple, sophisticated travel to the most amazing destinations across the United States. That is what we do best. Simple sophistication. With American Cruise Lines, it's all about simple sophistication. What I mean by that is we travel to the most amazing destinations across the U.S. Uh, we offer our guests an elevated cruise experience, not expressed through black tie affairs or formal gatherings, no jackets required on our cruises, but rather a personalized exploration, well-designed enrichment programs on board and ashore, and all the comforts that come with cruising on the newest fleet in the country. The American Cruise Line's difference. Our goal is to give the guests the best cruise experience possible by offering an unsurpassed level of attention. Some of those things include making it a very inclusive experience, such as gratuities are included, complimentary Wi-Fi. We just installed Starlink on all of our cruise ships across the country. So complimentary Wi-Fi is super important in this uh, wireless age. Onboard entertainment, enrichment program with guest lecturer on every ship, every cruise. Top shelf alcohol and cocktails are available at all times complimentary. There's no more uh, having to pay for a beer or wine or drink at all throughout the cruise. Library and, and computer stations. Open seated dining, that's super important. No more uh, having to do an early or late dinner. Everybody can be seated in any of our ships at any time uh, and we get you just place your order and you get custom made to order meals locally sourced cuisine pre prepared fresh daily these are unique to american cruise lines and we're really proud of uh, how this makes our clients feel we have some fantastic unique itineraries which i will be discussing the newest itineraries coming up in the 2023 and 2024 seasons. Let me show you what we have in, in store. American Cruise Lines currently sails over 50 itineraries visiting 35 states in the country. Basically, if it has water, we go there. <laughs> so uh, 
the first thing that we're going to be discussing would be the Northeast region. We have multiple uh, itineraries available throughout the coastal United uh, New England area, including the Hudson River, New England area, and Maine. The Yankee Seaports is our first itinerary we'll be discussing. As a Yankee myself, I really like talking about this because this is my location, this is my area. Uh, this itinerary is coming in 2024. It's a seven night, eight day cruise. It sails from Boston to New York or the reverse itinerary. <clears throat> uh, we begin our exploration of the most popular coastal ports in Boston, Mass. Those guests who take our Four Seasons package, which we'll discuss towards the end of the of uh, this conversation, uh, will start their embarkation with a guided Boston exploration. This guided exploration of Faneuil Hall, Quincy Market, Old South Church, and the Boston Public Library concludes at the ship in time for a relaxing afternoon cruise out of the Boston Harbor. We then visit Plymouth, Mass, Newport, Rhode Island, the New London Mystic, Connecticut area, Essex Old Saybrook, Connecticut, Sag Harbor, New York, Port Jefferson, New York, and it concludes in New York City. Being from Connecticut myself, I am so excited that we're able to showcase some of the treasures that coastal Connecticut has to offer. For example, while guests are docked in the New London Mystic area, we're going to be offering guests the following experiences. The New London Harbor and United States Coast Guard Academy. You'll be traveling by a motor coach to see the main highlights of this charming port city, viewing New London's top sites, iconic landmarks, and unique neighborhoods. You'll stop at Fort Trumbull, as well as <clears throat> you'll be making a stop at the United States Coast Guard Academy for a walking tour with a local guide. Then, You'll also have the option of visiting the Mystic Aquarium. I don't know if anybody's seen that or been to the Mystic Aquarium, but it is one of the nation's leading aquariums. Uh, and you'll learn about our, our oceans uh, while exploring indoor and outdoor exhibits. You can feed a ray, see the only spotted seals in the continental United States, experience the California Sea Lion Show, visit African uh, uh, penguin, chicks, and more. The Mystic Seaport is very unique. It's uh, the nation's leading maritime museum with 19 acres situated along the Mystic River. You, step, you can step aboard the 1841 whale ship, the Charles W. Morgan, which is designated a natural historic or national historic landmark, and the last wooden whale ship in the world. You explore a recreated 19th century seafaring village where you can meet blacksmiths, coopers, printers, and carvers all hard at work. You can also discover world-class ex ex uh, exhibitions of history, art, and more in one of the on-site galleries. So I actually went to the Mystic Seaport just last year and we went on a cruise around the seaport where it was all narrated and you would be uh, you learn about this particular area in mystic it's absolutely stunning the next itinerary that we're going to talk about is down east maine so this seven day eight night or seven night eight day cruise it starts in 2024 it's a round trip from Bangor, Maine. So this cruise brings us to Belfast, Rockland, Bar Harbor, Bath, Castine, and Booth Bay Harbor, stopping at each port to offer some of the most interesting and exclusive excursions available. For example, in uh, Belfast, Maine, uh, we have many excursion options available while we're in port. For those guests who want to explore on their own, we offer the Belfast Local Loop, where we will transport you from the ship to the center of town and back, and it runs on a continuous loop. We often have these local loops in many of our uh, towns that we visit so that people who want to do their own thing have that option. In Belfast, some other options include a walking exploration, 
an Ananda Yoga and Wellness Experience and the Local Color Gallery Art Appreciation Excursion. One of the most unique excursions in Belfast, I would say would be the Belfast Historic Walking Exploration. Our guests join a local Belfast historian for a walking tour through Belfast Historic Districts. They follow part of Belfast Outstanding Museum in the streets along with the water along the waterfront and enjoy the 19th century ambiance of the residential district. And they end their excursion at the Belfast Historical Society and Museum. Next, we have the Grand New England, which is a 14 night, 15 day itinerary. This is one of the most comprehensive New England cruising experiences available. It's coming in 2024. This cruise sails from <clears throat> New York City to Portland, Maine, or reverse, and it stops almost every day at a different port. We visit Hyde Park, Mystic, Sag Harbor, Newport, Martha's Vineyard, Boston, Gloucester, Portsmouth, Bar Harbor, Bath, and we end in Portland. Again, very educational and curated experiences are available at each port, with some of the most popular being in Bar Harbor. Now, I could go on and on about all of these excursions. There's so many of them. We probably have dozens uh, that we offer throughout this cruise, but I'm going to just concentrate on Bar Harbor because that is a, a, a or an experience in and of itself. So from a narrated scenic ride to Acadia National Park to a nature-filled walking experience with a state Maine certified wilderness guide at Hunter's Beach and Hunter's Brook Trail to a sunset nature cruise along the shoreline of Acadia National Park and a visit to Egg Rock Island and Lighthouse. There is even an option to come aboard the Miss Samantha, a 56-foot vessel with ample bench seating to watch experienced fishermen haul in lobster traps from the ocean floor as a professional naturalist describes everything and answers all your questions about lobster fishing. You may even be able to see some seals basking on the rocks or swimming in the nearby water. When I say we're, we make exclusive and curated experiences for our guests. This is just a small example of that. Now we move down to the southeast coast. We have multiple itineraries throughout the east coast. Uh, but what I'm going to be concentrating right now is on two particular itineraries that are new. The first is called the Complete Southeast. It's 21 nights 22 days in coming in 2022. We don't offer this very often, but it is going to sell out because it's going, it's so unique. We've never had anything like this before. This brings guests from Baltimore down through the Chesapeake Bay, along the East Coast Inland Passage, through along the east coast of Florida and ending in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we'll also offer it in the reverse direction. So we visit places like Yorktown, Virginia, Norfolk, Kitty Hawk, Wilmington, Charleston, Hilton Head, Savannah, St. Augustine, Amelia Island, West Palm Beach, Key West, Fort Myers Beach, just so many different locations. There are literally dozens of excursions offered on this cruise, but one of the highlights has to be St. Augustine. There's something for everybody there, from a self-guided tour of an alligator farm and zoological park, to joining a local historian and storyteller for an entertaining walk along the narrow brick passageways of the oldest city, along a path that few visitors get to see. You will learn about the legends and secrets of St. Augustine and have fun figuring out which of these outlandish tales is a complete lie. The Old Town Trolley will bring guests at their leisure with unlimited boarding and reboarding at 22 attractions throughout the city in an open air sightseeing trolley or 
get a first person account of how sleepy St. Augustine became a destination during the Gilded Age with the Gilded Age walking exploration with Henry Flagler. The next option that we have is the Florida Gulf Coast and Keys. People are super excited about this. This has been a huge hit with our guests. It's an eight day, seven night cruise, round trip out of St. Petersburg, Florida. It visits Fort, Me Fort Myers Beach, Key West, Marco Island, Punta Gorda, St. Petersburg, and ends in St. Petersburg. It's a fantastic way to explore the Florida coast and the Gulf of Mexico. Key West is probably the location our guests are most excited to visit. We have an opportunity to, opportunity to spend a day in Dry Tortugas National Park. You can visit Ernest Hemingway Home and Museum or let a local guide bring you through the center of Key West, stopping in the famous Duval Street with its diverse array of restaurants, shops, pubs and attractions, or you can visit Mallory Square where hundreds come each night to view the sunset and enjoy arts and crafts exhibitions, street performers, and food carts. Now we move on to the Mississippi River. Now, while we say the Mississippi River, we also cruise on the Ohio River, Tennessee River, and the Columbia River. Our newest itineraries are on the Tennessee and Ohio Rivers. The Grand Ohio River is a 14-night, 15-day itinerary starting in 2024. It starts in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and ends in St. Louis or reverse, depending on the date. This leisurely and scenic cruise brings us to Marietta, Ohio, Maysville, Kentucky, Cincinnati, Ohio, Louisville, Kentucky, Henderson, Kentucky, Evansville, Indiana, Paducah, Kentucky, Cape Girardeau, Missouri and St. Louis. One of the one of the highlights of this trip is our uh, visit to Cincinnati, Ohio. The Cincinnati City Experience is a narrated excursion beginning in the heart of the city in Fountain Square and bringing our guests through the city to learn about local landmarks and cultural hotspots the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, as well as the Cincinnati Art Museum are both popular excursions. And the best part is that all three excursions are complimentary. We have many complimentary excursions on our Mississippi River cruises. This is, these are, this is just a small taste of that. Tennessee Rivers is a seven night, eight day itinerary. Starting this year and cruising from Nashville, Tennessee to Chattanooga or reverse. This cruise spends a day cruising Lake Barkley and the Cumberland Rivers, Paducah, Savannah, Tennessee, Florence, Alabama, Decatur, Alabama, and ends in Chattanooga. Now, Chattanooga is a new destination for American Cruise Lines and it boasts one of the longest pedestrian bridges in the world, as well as a 13 mile river walk. One of the excursions we'll be offering is a walk along the Walnut Street Pedestrian Bridge. The Taste of Chattanooga is a local food experience where, there, where our guests visit a variety of area restaurants and, a, and sample unique cuisines and enjoy behind the scenes chats with the chefs who create them. Finally, a city exploration of Chattanooga will allow guests to visit Chattanooga's top sites iconic landmarks and unique neighborhoods. Now we visit California. We've never gone to California before. We're super excited about this itinerary. This reminds me of Full House. <laughs> um, America, we uh, go to San Francisco Bay Cruise, which is a seven night, eight day itinerary. Uh, it's an exploration of Northern California and Napa Valley. Beginning in San Francisco, California, we visit Stockton, Sacramento, and Napa uh, before returning to San, Francis San Francisco. <clears throat> when we dock in Vallejo, California, we'll have some of the most unique and exclusive excursions offered throughout our entire cruise catalog. 
One, for example, you can become a winemaker for a day with a blending experience at Raymond Vineyard in the heart of Napa Valley. You compete with other small teams for the best blended wine and the winning team's wine will be bottled on site, complete with a special American Cruise Lines label, and all the winemakers will receive their own bottle to commemorate their experience. We offer the wine train through Napa Valley, which includes a trip through Napa Valley in the comfortable historic train while enjoying a multi-course gourmet lunch, or you can choose to take a wine tasting experience to Artisa vineyards and winery or an intimate estate experience at Trefethen Family Vineyards where you'll, you are guided by wine experts through your tasting of wines that were harvested from the surrounding vineyard. Now we move on to the Pacific Northwest where we have several itineraries offered throughout the year. The most recent itinerary is our National Parks and Legendary Rivers. This has been in the works for a very long time. We've been doing the Columbian Snake River for, oh goodness, since like 2011, I believe it is, 2011, 2012. And we have found that there's been a big uptick with people wanting to also visit the national parks. So we thought that it would be a great idea to combine a river cruise and a national parks track. Now this particular cruise, you start in uh, Hayden Island, you go out to Astoria, then you visit Kalama, Washington, Stevenson, Richland, and you end in Clarkston. The second half is a land tour visiting Glacier National Park, Yellowstone National Park and Grand Teton National Park before ending in Jackson, Wyoming. This comprehensive national parks experience allows our guests to get the best of both worlds, cruising along the most beautiful and historic rivers in the country and a land tour to our most important national parks. Finally, we end with Alaska. We have offered Alaska cruises for several years and they are so popular, we sell out well in advance every year. But we are now offering a more comprehensive itinerary with our Alaskan Explorer 10 night, 11 day cruise, which is round trip out of Juneau. This cruise focuses on the beauty and majesty of the local bays and glaciers throughout Southeastern Alaska. Starting in Juneau, we travel to Haines, where we offer walking explorations, the Valley of the Eagles, nature and wildlife expedi expedition, and for the more adventurous, a Chilkoot Lake wildlife kayak adventure. We then spend a day cruising Glacier Bay while I'm an onboard guest speaker will board the ship for the day to provide expert narration and identify wildlife. A Huna Tlingit cultural interpreter will also join us on board to share the history of Glacier Bay's native clans and people. We will then travel to Sitka and Wrangell, where guests can visit Sitka National Historic Park, learn about arts and culture of Southeast Alaska, or join us on a Stikine River jet boat adventure. We spend a day cruising the Wrangell Narrows before traveling to Petersburg, where we have a slew of excursions available from private fishing charter to Lacante Glacier flight seeing experience to a walking exploration of Petersburg. After that, we sail through Tracy Arm and we feature a hot chocolate bar on the sun deck, just in case anybody wants some. Uh, and then we arrive in Juneau to disembark. One of the unique treats that we offer our guests are themed cruises throughout the country. Some of these are Lewis and Clark themed cruises, vineyard cruises, tulip festival cruises in the spring for, on the Puget Sound, super popular, whale watching, art immersion, culinary, the Mark Twain tribute on the upper Mississippi River, 
Uh, those are usually on our, one of our paddle wheelers. Civil War themed cruises, as well as holiday themed cruises like Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's. These are on very select cruises and dates and sell very well due, due to our onboard experts and the curated onboard experiences. We have enhanced guest experiences that we offer our guests. First, we have on the Mississippi Rivers, Columbian Snake Rivers, uh, we have exclusive coach tour buses. These are provided for our excursions and for our post-cruise transfers to the uh, airport uh, for our guests. This also allows us to do those uh, continuous shuttle runs into various towns, depending on the ports. We wouldn't have been able to offer that if we didn't have our own co coaches available. <clears throat> We have guided shore excursions. Now there are three types of shore excursions that we offer. Featured excursions are complimentary for all guests. Uh, they, some excursions have more of those than others, but we usually have at least a couple, if not most offered on our itineraries. Premium excursions uh, typically cost about 10 to $95 per person. Uh, and then signature excursions are limited availability. Sometimes there's only four or five spots available for a particular itinerary. So it is first come first serve. Uh, sometimes it's just that we have to make uh, reservations ahead of time. So we have a lot more space, but we need to know ahead of time how many people are going. We offer complimentary pre-cruise packages. Uh, for our Mississippi River, Columbian Snake River, and Juneau departures. These typically include a one-night stay at a centrally located hotel, concierge, concierge luggage service, a transfer to the ship the morning of embarkation, and usually it will include breakfast in the morning, although so, there are certain locations that that is not an option, but most times it does. Four Seasons pre-cruise package is available for a premium cost. Uh, these are for your uh, guests who want a little bit extra for with their pre-cruise uh, experience. You have a one night stay for uh, at the Four Seasons, full breakfast in the morning of embarkation, a narrated city tour, as well as concierge luggage service. These are typically available in Seattle, Boston, Baltimore, New Orleans, and St. Louis. We now offer domestic economy air. We have a whole travel team dedicated to helping you set up your air packages for your clients. As you can see, the $495 per person rate is phenomenal. It's a flat rate. Uh, it's uh, domestic economy air, it's $7.95 per person for Juno uh, trips. It is cancel for any reason protected. So if anybody gets our cancel for any reason protection plan when they purchase their uh, reservation, the air is covered in that. You just uh, select it at the time of booking and we take care of the rest. Group and charter options are available. I have to put that in there because that's what I do. Uh, feel free to reach out to me at any time and I'd be more than happy to discuss the options available. Now, let's talk about our fleet. We are an all-American company. We build our own ships in at the Chesapeake Shipbuilding and Naval Architects in Salisbury, Maryland. Our coastal cats are our brand new fleet of ships that will be launching this year, starting with the American Glory and the American Eagle. They have a hold 109 guests. As you can see, the front portion of the ship, it looks like a catamaran, whereas the aft of the ship is more of a traditional cruise ship. This makes, makes it extremely stable and has a very shallow draft. So we're able to get places where no one else can go. We can go in those rivers, those lakes, those tributaries where we were never able to get to before. Now, because these are still in 
the works, they're still being built. We're due to have them launch coming up in the late summer into the fall. These are artist renderings, but these this will look extremely similar to what it's going to look like. This is one of our sun decks, for example. Uh, the Coastal Cats will have staterooms ranging from 260 square feet to 550 square feet. Uh, there are 56 staterooms on each of these ships. So this is a small ship, uh, but you will not feel cramped at all. These have Rolls, Rolls Royce stabilizers, a large restaurant, two lounges, a fitness center, laundry room, two sun decks, and plenty of additional outdoor space for sightseeing, plus a walking track. You, I don't know how many times I've been asked whether there's a walking track on any of our ships. We're finally including it on one of these on our ships. People are going to be so excited. As you can see, there's a bar right there. Uh, very casual elegance. That's, that's what we strive for. Our American river boats. We have six of these, American Song, Harmony, Jazz, Melody, Symphony, and American Serenade. Uh, the state, uh, the, these tend to be about 275 to 650 square feet with 90 to 95 staterooms. They launched anywhere from two, 2018 to 2023. Uh, they have two primary lounges, fitness center, large staterooms, large dining rooms, multiple sun decks, private balconies for all staterooms. You can see many of them have the floor to ceiling sliding glass doors. So the view is first and foremost of, uh, of importance. Our paddle wheelers, these are just so beautiful. It's, they travel on the Mississippi River and the Columbian Snake Rivers. We have the American Splendor and Heritage are on the Mississippi. The American Pride and American West are on the Columbian Snake. They range anywhere from 183 to 445 square feet, depending on the ship, with 67 to 98 staterooms. We also have multiple lounges, sun decks, large dining rooms, plenty of space for viewing. And it has that historic nostalgic feel that people really are looking for, especially if you're thinking of like a Mark Twain themed cruise or cruising on the Columbian Snake. They really think nostalgic, old school paddle wheeler. And we have our, our decorations, our internal locations are very much geared towards that nostalgic old world feel without feeling stuffy or out of date. Then we have our coastal ships. The Constellation class has uh, 170 guests. Uh, the Constella American Constellation is on the West Coast doing Puget Sound and San Juan Islands and that area, the, uh, as well as Alaska. And the American Constitution is on the East Coast doing our coastal cruises on the East Coast. The Independence class, uh, the American Independence, American Star, and the American Spirit, they hold 100 guests. Uh, the American Spirit is on the West Coast, and the Independence and Star are on the East Coast. The American Star primarily does the New England Islands, the uh, uh, Cape Codder cruises, as well as the American Independence does main coast and harbors. Uh, historic South and Golden Isles and a lot of other uh, East Coast itineraries. I just want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we share America's story on the America's finest ships. Uh, and we are so happy that you'll be working with us and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. That was excellent. Thank you so much. Really need to kind of kind of see your neck of the woods up on the screen. Being mm -hmm. from Newport, Rhode Island, I get to see American cruise line ships all the time in port. It's really a lot of fun. So we do have some questions come in uh, as we uh, go through some of these. So let me ask. So one of the questions came in is, do you offer any agent fans? 
What are the discounts yeah. maybe, Sarah, that you offer for folks who are travel advisors? We absolutely offer FAMS. We really encourage you to join us and experience us because because once you experience uh, cruising with us, you'll be sending everybody to, to join us. So the uh, you would register on our travel advisor portal and you would uh, just fill out the application. You can choose any of the itineraries. They're typically approved about 60 days prior to the sailing date. Um, at 50% off for you and a guest. If you can wait to last minute and wait for a week prior to sailing, you get 75% off for you and a guest. Uh, so you just need to apply. You do need to, uh, obviously you're all CLIA certified, so that's uh, definitely uh, required, but also you would need to uh, um, do our training program, a six module training program. Once that's completed, you qualify to get a FAM. Excellent. So um, speaking about the course, um, we have an agent who graduated from your course in 2019. Mm -hmm. Must uh, that person take the course again? It's strongly recommended. As you can see, we've the lot has changed since 2019. So I would definitely recommend uh, going through the course again because it has been completely revamped since you've last taken it. Okay. Um, one of the questions was about um, the drink packages on board. They're available at all times, correct? Not just lunch and dinner? We have no drink packages because alcohol is available 24 seven at no cost to our guests. It's included in the cost of the cruise. This includes beer, wine, top shelf alcohol, mixed drinks, non-alcoholic beverages, and people can are welcome to bring alcohol aboard the vessel with no corkage fees. We'll provide any glasses, ice, mixers at no charge. Excellent. So we do have a question about accessibility for those um, folks who might be in a wheelchair. Can you tell us a little bit more about the accessibility on the cruise lines? Absolutely. Uh, so on board the vessel, we do have one to two wheelchair accessible staterooms. We do not have roll in uh, showers, but they'll have a, a lip of about five and a half inches or so. But we can put shower benches and raised toilet seats in any of the staterooms, not just the accessible ones. Uh, and we have elevators to all decks and it's very easy to get on and off the ship uh we have uh we typically can pull right up to the docks although there are some locations that require tenders we have our staff is very 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 good at making sure that people getting on and off the ship gets get off and uh safely uh whether they're in a wheelchair use a walker use a cane have any kind of mobility issues Additionally, our excursions for the most part are going to be accessible. If they're not accessible or if only they're partially accessible, we make that known so people can make a determination of what they feel comfortable doing. For example, on uh, say you're on the lower Mississippi River going to Oak Alley uh, Plantation, they have a uh, golf cart to bring people up that long stretch between where we join the or get there to the uh, house itself. So people don't have to walk very long. So we try to make accommodations as much as possible, as well as provide uh, bus lifts if necessary uh, for those that need it. So if there are any mobility questions, uh, mobility requests or requirements for our guests, just let us know ahead of time and we will work with you. Excellent, thank you. A question, uh, a few questions came up about uh, solo travelers. So single mm -hmm. cabin rates, um, single supplement. Can mm -hmm. you share a little bit about that? Absolutely. So I'm actually gonna go backwards a little bit because I wanna see whether, one of my deck plans, I don't think one of my deck plans is here, but uh, we actually have single staterooms. Uh, single staterooms are priced for our single travelers, so they don't have to pay a single supplement. Uh, we have some, ha some ships have let more than others. Uh, for example, the American, 
the American Spirit and the American Star have two single staterooms on the ship, whereas the American Pride is like 12 or 15 single staterooms. Uh, so those are phenomenal. They almost always have private balconies uh, and they're very roomy, over 200 square feet. So the, the your guests will not feel cramped. We also have the option of doing single supplements. Uh, it's 150% of the brochure fare. So it's very reasonable. And you just, uh, it just depends on whether they want to be in a single room with a twin bed or a double room with a king size bed. Excellent. A question came up about age. So uh, there's a few questions and I'll kind of put it all together. So families traveling together, multi-generational, um, what do you have available for children under two? Does that include any daycare services provided? And what would be your recommendation um, for families traveling in, you know, multi-generational grandparents to parents to the kids? Uh, being the group coordinator, I've worked with many multiple multi-generational groups uh, with small children, all the way from infants, all the way up to, you know, 18 year olds. We do not have <clears throat> uh, daycare provi uh, provisions. We don't have cribs. We don't have uh, any anything geared towards children, although we do welcome them. We are docked almost every day, uh, sometimes every day, depending on the itinerary. So there's multiple uh, times when they can you can get off the ship and explore on your own. Uh, we do have child children rates as well. Uh, an eight day, seven night cruise for anybody from infants to age 16 uh, is typically $2,200 per person. Uh, and they would uh, stay with two paying adults. So uh, we can, depending on this, the, the age of the child, the parents might bring a pack and play with them, uh, or we can put in an, an extra twin bed. Uh, we don't have cots or pull out couches or anything. We wanna make sure everybody's as comfortable as possible. Uh, but we do uh, welcome all ages uh, on board our vessels for multi-generational uh, trips. Excellent. There's a lot of interest in the new Coastal Cat uh, ships. Um, there's a few questions. Can they sail on the Great Lakes? What other itineraries might they go to in the future? And what are y'all planning? Okay, excellent questions. So uh, we, uh, American Cruise Lines itself does not sail on the Great Lakes, but our sister company, Pearl Seas Cruises, does. The Pearl Mist, in particular, cruises on the uh, Great Lakes uh, because there are international stops. Uh, because we are an American flagged ship, we do not dock in any non-U.S. port. So, <clears throat> we would not be doing anything in the Great Lakes as of right now. I don't know what's going to come in the future, but I have asked that particular question, and they said not in the foreseeable future. Um, as far as what itineraries are upcoming, these are the first two cruises or the first two ships to join our fleet. We are planning to have. Oh, I think they said that they were going to be bringing on another, at least another 10 different ships, both our modern riverboats and coastal cats, which means we are going to be expanding our itinerary range. Uh, I have a feeling we are going to be doing more on the West Coast. We're going to be doing more on uh, the uh, smaller, more out of the way locations where people typ typically don't cruise because the big ships just can't go there. Uh, we, it, everything is in the works right now. Uh, I have a lot of TBAs right now uh, being worked on. So keep your eyes out, keep your ears out for new itineraries over the course of the next uh, six months to 12 months, because we're gonna have some exciting things happening in 2024 and 2025 as the new ships come out. Excellent. Um, there's a, there's a, 
a theme question kind of related mm -hmm. to like the expansion of the itineraries. Is there a certain time of year that the Civil War themes cruise is offered? It's not necessarily the time of year, but the specific itineraries. So we typically do the Civil War uh, themed cruises in the summer and fall time frame on the Mississippi River. And then we also do it on a couple couple of a couple of dates on the historic South and Golden Isles cruise which is between Charleston and Jacksonville Amelia Island area along the East Coast Inland Passage so it's not necessarily a time of year um, the historic South cruise we only do in the spring or in the late fall early winter so you know that would be a particular time of year um, but it's really, those are the only two itineraries that we would do uh, the Civil War themed cruise. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question about, are there any four night or five day cruises available? We have two currently, one of which this is the last year that we're offering it. Uh, the, the highlights of the Mississippi River is a four night, five day itinerary round trip out of New Orleans. The, the end of this year is the last time that we're offering that. The other one is called the highlights of the Columbia River and that is a round trip out of the Hayden Island, Portland, Oregon area. Uh, that is really popular for people just starting to get into the uh, river cruise experience. They may not be sure about whether they like it versus, you know, the other European river cruising or the large ships that they might be used to. This is a good getting their feet wet kind of uh, cruise because we do visit Astoria, we visit Multnomah Falls, we go to, um, you know, a lot of the most popular locations on the Columbia River, but it's not a full week. Uh, I also does still include that complimentary hotel stay before the cruise as well. So those are the two short cruises we offer. Perfect. So uh, I think this is a follow-up question when you were talking about the uh, multi-gen and traveling with families. Mm -hmm. uh, they asked, would they need two rooms for families? I guess that depends on how many people are in their group, but can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about maybe the how many uh, kids maybe could fit in a cabin mm -hmm. or what are some of those kind right. of like arrangements? Well, the the biggest thing is uh, the there the different uh, staterooms can hold only a certain amount of guests, whether the, no matter the age. So a maximum of three guests can fit in the suites, like an owner suite or veranda suite, a grand suite. A maximum of three guests can fit there. I have worked with uh, families that. Um, I have worked with families that have uh, done uh, adjoining rooms. We do have adjoining rooms available. So if you have, say, a mom and a dad and two kids, they could take two different rooms with an adjoining door between them. Uh, additionally, uh, we can raise the partitions between the balconies so families can share one big family balcony as well. That's really good for parties and family groups. So. Um, but there are options. Uh, if you're looking to get something that has like five people to a, to a, a particular stateroom, we would not be able to accommodate that, but we can do three to a room or look at, uh, or look at adjoining rooms. This has been excellent. Thank you so much, Sarah. This has been really great. We had a fantastic presentation. Thank you so much. Great itineraries, looking forward to it. Love the Florida Gulf and Keys itineraries. We got a lot of great fun comments coming through. And so I wanna thank you very much. And uh, do you have any parting words for us, Sarah? I just really appreciate everybody's hard work and uh, definitely give us a call. Learn, check out our new uh, travel advisor portal information on our website and Hopefully we can welcome you aboard on a FAM at some point. Have a wonderful day. Great, thank you everyone. If we didn't get to your question, we will forward those to Sarah. And thank you so much for joining us today. Everyone have a great, great day. Bye-bye.